Hello, everybody. We are back with Clock Tower, Return of Scissorman. When left, we met, we had completed Jennifer's A rank ending. So now we are going to start with Helen's scenario. And of course, we start with Samuel Barton's prologue. Professor Barton. What on earth are you doing, Professor? Amazing effect. You mustn't hypnotize her like this. She's not ready to remember the murders yet. Helen, the clock tower murders are fascinating research material for me. I must know the truth of what happened. She can't take any more of this today, Professor. I'm taking her home. Remember one thing, Helen. You may be her guardian, but you are also my assistant. Yes, Professor. No, you may be his assistant, but you're also her guardian. Let's take a look like we did before. Clock Tower Murders. The mass murder vote of over 10 victims in this case. How fascinating. Intriguing. Jennifer Simpson, one of only two survivors. I have to get information out of her for future profiling materials. Giant pair of scissors is on the desk. They are a replica of the scissors used by the murderer in the clock tower case. These are like the weapon he used to slash up his victims. Smell of ammonia. Okay, and just like with Struggle Within, the hint is supposed to be here. The first hint, I believe, was supposed to be here, but I got it in Jennifer's scenario. So let's get the hell out of here. My laboratory. Lately, I've been doing mostly criminal psychology research. Huh, the staff is still here. A statue. It's cold. One of the items found at the scene of the clock tower murders. It seems to be hiding some sort of secret. It would be a good idea to get an expert opinion on this. Professor, Helen left a few minutes ago, and she looked really angry. Hmm. You know, Helen and Jennifer are really beginning to look like sisters, aren't they? I guess that's what happens when you live together. One mustn't let their personal feelings get in the way. <coughs> Jennifer is nothing more than another research subject. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Harris's desk. Clipped out articles of the clock tower story are scattered about. It seems Harris has gone somewhere. Right on your package. Professor, a newspaper reporter is here. Do you have an appointment for an interview? It's about the clock tower murders, isn't it? Hmm. I guess they want to sensationalize the scissor man who really doesn't even exist. Scissor man. It'd be cool if he were real. Huh? Uh, just 
go. Grr. Stuff. So something I need to do in here. Yeah, you gotta check out like everything. We looked at Harris's desk. We saw the map. I guess you're supposed to check out Harris's desk. I noticed that he took off after speaking to the package dude. Now, in our first playthrough, we spoke to Harris twice so that we can play as Jennifer. We have to just give him a passing acknowledgement to get Helen. Oh, Professor, a newspaper reporter was looking for you on the first floor. Oh, thank you. And that's it. Leave. If you speak to Harris again, he'll start asking about Jennifer because he likes her. And that will trigger getting Jennifer. But we don't want to play as Jennifer in this game. So we're just going to get the information about the reporters downstairs and move along. Oh, Professor, I'm the one who called you from the Oslo Weekly News. My name is Nolan Campbell. This is Tim, my cameraman, who dies all the time in the final stage. I'm a bit busy. Please keep it brief. Then I'll get right to the point. Have you been able to figure out who the murderer is? anything for sure yet because the victim's testimony lacks credibility. Oh, you mean the victim that's testifying? That'd be Jennifer Simpson, wouldn't it? Yeah, but what about her? Oh, uh, nothing really. It's just that we saw her leaving a few minutes ago. And since we'd run into her, we asked her for an interview, but she refused. You just said her testimony lacked credibility. I know what you're going to say. That monster she was talking about, the scissor man, and whether he really exists or not. That's it. That's right. That's what our readers want to know. Because the existence of this scissor man has become a symbol of terror among youngsters. Yes, and that's because trashy gossip magazines like yours have sensationalized the whole thing. Ouch, that hurt. Not much I can say to that, is there? Well, let's start from the conclusion. It is a fact that there was a murderer who used a giant pair of scissors as his murder weapon. But that doesn't make him into an immortal monster. We're just dealing with some odd screwball. But what about what she said? She was scared. She thought she saw something. Oh, I see, but, okay, that's that. Interview's over. There's something I must be attending to. Ah, well, okay, I understand. Thank you very much. Sorry I couldn't be as much help as you would hope. I have to get back to the lab. I'm expecting another survivor of the clock tower murder. He's supposed to be a young boy, about 10 years old. Hi.
Love them graphics. look at the statue first. Oh, that's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on the statue. That's right. I still need to get an expert opinion on the statue. Okay, let's speak to Harris. Professor, the boy that survived the clock tower murders is here. Oh, has he arrived already? Yeah, he's waiting in the therapy room. Is there something I can do for you? I should probably ask Professor Sullivan, the head librarian at the Metropolitan Library. Yeah, but there was that old butler at the Barrows Mansion named Rick. I could show it to him first to see if he knows anything. I'm pretty sure he lives in the suburbs. I could ask Harris to show it to him. Ask Harris yes or no. Now... In Jennifer's scenario, I said yes, which means Harris brings it to Rick's house because he was once a butler for the Barrows family. This means that if you play Jennifer's game and you don't make a mistake, which results in the E ending, the E ending in both scenarios is what you get if you don't remember where you sent the statue. So playing your second scenario results in you not picking up the statue. Anyway, in Jennifer's scenario, I had Barton tell Harris to take it to Rick's house. So um, in Chapter 2, Nolan, who likes Jennifer too, goes to Rick's house to retrieve the statue. Now, I'm playing Helen's, um, Helen's game, and if I were to say yes to Harris to bring it to Rick's house, then Inspector Goss would be going to Rick's house to get the statue, and it would be the same thing. Well, I usually always play it this way. When I do Jennifer's scenario, I take the statue over to Rick's house which results in Nolan going there in Chapter 2 to get the statue. But when I play Helen's game, I say no to Harris. So Barton will instead send the statue to the Metropolitan Library, which is Helen-only stage. So I get to play as Helen in all three stages. You can choose whatever you want for Stage 2. The only real important thing about it is that you remember where you sent it because you don't want to play scenario two in a place where the statue isn't because you'll end up completing the stage, leaving without the statue, and getting the E ending. I'm going to say no to Harris. All right, then. I'll have Professor Sullivan at the Metropolitan Library take a look. Okay, that's that. Should probably go to the therapy room. So now, just remember, I didn't tell Harris to take it to Rick. I left it as is. It's going to the library. Thank you very much for coming. How do you do? I'm an instructor at the Granite Orphanage. I'm Edward's guardian. Edward, I thought he completely lost his memory from the shock. Does he remember his name? No, I call him Edward because not having a name to go by makes things very difficult. Now, since this is our first day, 
Will you answer some simple questions for me? Okay, Edward? I want you to honestly tell me everything you remember about what happened. Uh, yes. Well then, let's get started. Okay, finally the stupid prologue is over. I'll just overwrite Jennifer's data. You said your hard drive crashed? That's too bad. Yes, I lost all of this morning's data. I hope I can get it fixed sometime today. Otherwise, I won't get my dissertation done on time. Don't worry. When Danny gets back, I'm sure he'll be able to help you. You're probably right. In the meantime, I'm going to step out for a bit. Would you ask Danny for me, please? Sure. See you later. So now we have this intermission again. Where you have to go around and meet and talk with the main characters in the game. Start at the police station. Assistant Inspector Goss, the person in charge of the clock tower case, is here. Well, hey, Cheech, got some new info? No. Have you got any leads? Nope, nothing. That old geezer of yours, he ain't coming clean. Do you mean Professor Barton? Yeah, that's him. He said there ain't nothing straight about the case. Yes, that sounds like Professor Barton. What about that little cutie? Jennifer, she's still having nightmares occasionally. I ain't surprised. She was almost flashed up too, wasn't she? Well, let me know if you learned something. Okay, bye. I'll be mobbed by reporters if I go over there. Norway International Hotel. Edward and his guardian are staying here. Yeah, that's something to help you. Um, Jennifer, you know, because Nolan, the reporter, likes her, even though it says that she's 15 for this game. She doesn't look 15, but she supposedly is. But anyway, Nolan is more of the story for Jennifer's scenario. Inspector Gatz is more of um, an influence in Helen's scenario. They're here. Oh, Helen. How's it going? Any results from Professor Barton's therapy? No, but we can't give up hope. Sometimes something will jog one's memory. Yes. Will you be staying here long? Mr. Barton also thought it a good idea. We plan to stay here for a while. Oh, really? Well, hang in there, Edward. Yes, Mrs. Maxwell. I didn't realize it was this late. Got to get back to the university. I, like, literally just realized her last name is Maxwell. And George Maxwell from The Struggle Within. Interesting. Well, I should get home and work on my dissertation. I'm 
the package again. Oh, Ms. Maxwell, I replaced your hard drive. Thanks, that's a big help. I'm going down to the lounge for a short nap. What are you going to do? Eh, we'll all be going home soon. Oh, okay. Well, no need to lock up. Okay? Scenario one, Helen Maxwell. Same location as with Jennifer, the office building. Some cosmetics on the shelf brought in by the staff. Don't know which is whose. Is that you, Baker? Oh, it's you, Helen. Baker's still in the lab. Rose, are you seeing Baker again here? Yeah, sort of. Well, no matter how late it is, remember... Don't use the university as a motel. Yeah, okay. Okay, Karen. I think it's about time for a nap. Would you turn off the light, please? I can't sleep with it on. Of course. Comic book brought in by one of the staff. Surrounding campus is lit up by the street lights. Old air conditioner that doesn't work very well. I'll take a quick cat nap and then work on my report. And now who is it? Let me try hiding in the boys' room. Somehow, her hands are covered with blood. Huh? I'd be scared to step out of that alcove. No way to get in Fierro's lab. Let me just go back, even if it's just for the sake of uh, completionism. He 
deep, uncomfortable bunk bed famous for being squeaky. Well, body's gone. <laughs> Uh, never mind. Was gonna be thorough and check the exit there, but... monitor state still on it. Something written on the table. You have discovered hit number five. Dress shirts, neckties, and umbrellas. The owner is well prepared. Several stuffed animals inside. I wonder why these are here at a university. None of your business, Karen. A flashlight. This might be useful. Now have the flashlight. Oh no, the fax machine rings. Gotta wait for the fax to come out. We saw this in Jennifer's scenario, but I still love it. Someone is sending a fax from somewhere inside the building. The handwriting is weak and unsteady. Get ready, I'm coming to get ya. The power is out here too. The building is completely cut off from the outside. Department. 
There's been a murder. Come, quickly, please. Please relax, ma'am. Did you see the murderer? He's the one with the giant scissors. Scissor man! You've heard of him, haven't you? If this is a prank phone call... Wait! Even in Japanese games, cops are useless. Sofa. There are small shoe prints. These shoe prints, they look like they were made by a child. Danny's desk, it's really messy. Harris's desk. Many cut out articles on the clock tower case scattered all over it. Harris was quite energetic in his investigation of Scissor Man. Many files on cases of mental illness. My desk. Oh no, I left the key to the office laying here. You now have the office key. Beth's desk. It's clustered with stuffed animals. Looks like she forgot these. There's a can of mace. This must be one with the powerful, irritating smell. And we can use that against Scissor Man if he shows up here. Volumes on psychoanalysis. Some of them were written by Professor Barton. Barton's desk. That's right. His phone should be able to call outside. The line is dead. I can get into the therapy room with this. are stored here. Ah, shit. <gasps> that was a bottle of ammonia. An acrid smell fills this room. files on the desk. There's something written on the file. Hint number four. Rose is laying on the bed. <gasps> Poor Rose. She ends up dead no matter which scenario you play. Oh, 
Thank you, Mark Cableberg. Door won't open. Como sa va? That's okay. Okay, cool. Welcome, welcome. Pretty good. Door is tightly shut. Well, then there's no way out. need to sit down now. Uh-oh. Something sounds like water dripping. Yes. Chair has been knocked over. I wonder what happened. There is a key laying on the table. What's this? You now have storage key. A sofa the security guards often use for naps. Yes, I can actually tell. <gasps> now security will surely come if I can somehow stay alive till then. <laughs> That's very cute. Never heard a French person say that before. Research lab currently not being used. There's no way to open this door. empty oh that's okay wooden box stuffed with papers probably old research documents everything seems normal Nothing inside except a scrap of paper. Parts for computers. This door should lead to the parking lot outside. Huh. 
doorknob is wired shut. Won't open. Oh, that's right. This door isn't supposed to be used. I wonder if I could do something to the wire. What the hell was that about? Uh. Police department? I don't like cop shows. Really? You've never spoken with any Americans online? Okay. Let's find the storage room. I don't know, you're on Twitch, but I'm the first American you've spoken to. That's odd, it doesn't even budge.
cheap desk. They got budget problems here too. Yeah. Wonder if there's something here that might be useful. Nothing abnormal. Some tools here. I wonder if it's being repaired. This might be useful. You now have pliers. Okay, we got both our hints. We've got the players and the key for storage. Let's get to the first floor and get the hell out of here. Jennifer took the emergency ladder and I need to take the storage. Huh, that sounds cute. Surprised I was able to leave with Scissor Man coming. Aw, thank you. What in the hell is going on? We haven't solved the last case yet, and now another mass murder. And you're saying the murderer is Scissor Man? But it's true, I saw him clearly. Hmm, interesting. Well, we're done questioning you for now. You can go on home now, Teach. Hmm. Oh, but don't go anywhere too far for a while. Because I'll probably have to call you in again. Soon. I know, Gots. Helen. It's all right, Jennifer. Let's keep looking for more clues about Scissor Man. If we don't do something ourselves, he'll probably kill us both. No need for sarcasm, Teach. I really do want to believe your story, you know. Was it the real Scissor Man? Yes, but I don't know if it was the same one who attacked you before. But he sure didn't look human to me. Well, shall we go? Okay. <laughs> I have an accent? Somehow I must find a clue about Scissor Man. Don't want to see Nolan. I wonder if Edward is there.
Helen, I heard that you were attacked by Scissor Man. Yes, I was. I don't know if he was the same one as in the Clock Tower case, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks. Maybe he will go after Edward, too. Where is Edward? I think he's at the library. He seems to like it there. I'll go there and check on him then. Would you? Please tell him to come back soon. All right, Metropolitan Library. I wonder if Professor Sullivan is there. Cute. I'm not really a fan of Jason Statham. Okay, Sullivan's not here. The investigation of the scene seems to be over. Helen, are you all right? Yes, but more importantly, can we use the room now? Yes, but we couldn't get in all morning because of the investigation. By the way, Beth, I'd like to take a look at the statue. You mean the one they found at the scene of the murders? No, the statue of David. Did Professor Barton have it? Well, he did, but I think he asked someone to take a look at it. It's not here? No, and Professor Barton isn't either. He's away on police business. Damn, I wanted to look at the statue because I was hoping it would give me a clue about Scissor Man. Did he tell you where he was taking it? I think he said he would either take it to the library or to a man named Rick. If he took it to the library, that would be Mr. Sullivan. I took a few years of French in high school, but I didn't do too well at it. I'll call Mr. Sullivan. Okay, let's see if Sullivan is in there. You again. Excuse me, is Mr. Sullivan here? No, he hasn't come back yet. Oh, I see. House is surrounded by reporters. I shouldn't go anywhere near there now. Oh, pleasure to meet you, dude. Thanks. No reason to go to the office. Oh, yes. I'll ask Gats about Rick. On your ass. Got any new info, Teach? Do you know a man named Rick? Rick, that sounds familiar. Oh, yeah. He's the old geezer that used to be the butler for the Barrows family. The Barrows family? Of the Clock Tower case? That would mean he... Well, he quit ten years before it all happened. I went to see him once, but he didn't know anything about the case. But anyway, what about him? Well, Professor Barton might have given the statue to him. The statue? What for? That statue just might be the key to the secret of Scissor Man. 
I think Professor Barton wanted him to look at it. I see. And since you believe in Scissor Man, he wanted to get your hands on it too? Well, if you put it that way. Well, we ain't got any other leads, do we? I can go and get it. You will? All I have to do is talk to Rick and just get the statue, right? Nothing to it. Yes, but... Ask Gots, yes or no? Now, just like in Jennifer's scenario, you come to this question, and this will determine what your second scenario is, what you choose to do. You got to remember where you sent the statue. In Jennifer's scenario, I had Rick, the butler, look at the statue. So the question came up when I was talking to Nolan, and because I sent it to Rick, I had to say yes and let Nolan go to Rick's house. Um, I'm not going to do Rick's house in this other scenario. You can play Helen all the way through because she goes to the library if you had Professor Barton send it to the library. And since we sent it to the library at the beginning of this Helen scenario, I have to say no to God. Don't bother going to Rick's house because I'm going to look at the library. Although, you know, they could have killed two birds with one stone, but this is about your game. Thank you for offering, but Mr. Sullivan at the library may have it. If he doesn't, I'll give you a call. If he doesn't, you get the E ending. Scenario two, Edward. So here we are at the library. You again, you bitch. Excuse me, is Mr. Sullivan in again? Mr. Sullivan, he's now in the head librarian's office. I see, thank you. Who it is. Well, if it isn't Edward, what are you doing here? It's pouring at the hotel. Hmm. Is Kay with you? No, she isn't. Oh. Reading room cannot be entered without a key. I'm sure this is Mr. Sullivan's office. Right on his fat gut. Hello, Helen. It's been a long time, hasn't it, Mr. Sullivan? I've heard about what happened to you. How terrible. Yes. By the way, Mr. Sullivan. Yes, I've heard. There is something you would like to research. I'll give you a key to the reading room so that you can use the reference materials as you please. The reading room is right next door. Oh, and the statue. Oh, yes, that's it. <laughs> Professor Barton left it with me. Please come pick it up on your way out. Thank you very much, Mr. Sullivan. Okay. 
okay. I'm pausing because I'm going on a little break. I will be right back.
do. Okay, we're back. Let us go to the reading room. Now I can enter the reading room. Now I have a machine gun. Reading room. There are many valuable works here only available to university personnel. I just hope there's something here that will explain the scissor man. Doesn't seem to be in this area. Step ladder. This is a book I've been wanting to read for a long time, but this is hardly a good time. to be in this area. Books relating to England are up there. Lords of Northern England, this is it. Excuse me, but the library will be closing shortly. Oh, I see. Okay, I found a clue about scissor man. I still have to pick up the statue. Strange, the clock is chiming. Sullivan. Ellen, it seems the bells of the giant clock are broken. I think I'll go have a look. Well, I'll go with you. Thank you. Please follow me. The clock hasn't been working for ages. I wonder if someone has been messing with it. Oh, no. Mr. Sullivan? <laughs> Mr. Sullivan. Ah, uh, give me something. Edward's voice is heard from upstairs. It's Edward. He can't still be here. Helen? It's Edward's voice, and it's coming from inside that room. Yeah. 
that chain just came to life and snagged our ankle upstairs. And there's the librarian stuffed on the shelf. I've been locked in. A rather primitive copier. They're obviously having budgetary problems here too. Just like at the university. Clerical desk in perfect order. I'll bet everyone has gone home. Edward, I thought you'd still be here. It's dangerous here. Come with me. Edward, you hide under this table until I call you. Be a good boy, and don't worry. Yeah. We'll make it. Areas full of foreign books. A vent. It's covered with a wire and fastened with screws. That's it. Edward could fit through. He's small. If I could just get the screen off. Let's go back up to the clock now our library hint is up here operation panel of the big clock something is written on it you have discovered hint seven Okay. Nothing more for us to do up here. We're not even going to check out Sullivan's bloody remains. Many books about archaeology on the shelf. Some of them were written by Mr. Sullivan. Personal computer, the image of Sullivan struggling amateurishly at the keyboard comes to mind. 
Envelopes and documents relating to multiple personalities on the desk. The sender of these envelopes is Professor Barton. I really shouldn't look inside. I wonder if there's anything else. Oh, a key is inside the drawer. You now have the collection room key. I'm sure the collection room is in the back. Now I can enter the collection room. Ugh. The collection room is where Mr. Sullivan keeps the artifacts he dug up in Egypt and other places, of which he is very proud. Mr. Sullivan has shown you this room many times, but this time it's pitch dark inside. Didn't there used to be an aquarium here? I could use the light from it. And guess who will be behind it most times when you turn it on? Thank goodness the power is on here. Sometimes Scissor Man will be like posed right behind the fish tank. Ancient swords, strangely shaped pots, and other valuable artifacts. Ha! Ah, the statue is together with the other artifacts. Thank goodness, there it is. You now have the statue. Since I have what I came for, all I have to do now is find a way out. Uh-oh. Or he could be standing there. Now, it depends on what you think that superhuman teleportation thing that Scissor Man did. Um, some people would think of it as obvious that there are two Scissor Men. Um, some people would think it obvious that Edward is the Scissor Man. 
Um, and some people will think that, you know, Scissor Man is just paranormal. And he is, you know, we've seen paranormal shit. Wonder if there's something useful here. A screwdriver is in one of the drawers. Now have the screwdriver. Since we played Jennifer's scenario, since we played Jennifer's scenario and we found out who the real scissor man was, it would probably seem obvious. Police car siren is heard. Someone must have called the police. Door can't be open from the front. Many policemen are swarming around outside looking for a way in. There are so many people just on the other side of the door. Now, when I first played, I think I had Helen first because I didn't know about all the little quirks and stuff. She's the library clerk I just saw. God, I'm batting a thousand with these Scissor Man pop-ups. There's not a lot of shit you can use to fight against him. So for some reason, this counter works in many instances to hide from him. This is driving me nuts. Magazine. Smile of the model on the cover looks fake. Doesn't seem possible. There were so many here just a moment ago. Red stains on these books. Blood? I don't have time to read these books. I'm not telling you to read them, Karen. Many encyclopedias. Um, yeah. Edward, come out from there and come over here. Edward, you can probably squeeze through here to the outside. Hurry, run away from here. Okay, I will. All right. Now Edward is safe, so we gotta get out of here.
Hey, Teach, what's going on? Teach, hang in there. And they finally got through. So, like I said, and I can't remember exactly which I thought when I first played this, and I think my very, very first playthrough was as Helen. Um, yeah, there's a curse. We know that from the original Clock Tower, so it could be that Scissor Man is paranormal in some way he is a cursed mutant guy then again there is the idea that there are two scissor men and then there's the other idea that edward is scissor man or one of two scissor men um we've already played jennifer scenario and this game is like 25 years old um at least 25 years old so I'm just gonna give the spoiler I think you do discover in both scenarios no matter what that Edward is the other Barrow's brother so he is the real scissor man or at least he was the scissor man in the original game you know that's why he was the other survivor because um you know, in the original Clock Tower, he's one of the cursed twins, and the other one was an outright Jab of the Hut mutant. Okay? And they found this kid. You didn't see him in the original game, but he was a survivor, and that's what's going on in this game. And uh, you find out he was the other cursed twin the whole time. Although, obviously, not a total ugly mutant like his brother. But, in Jennifer's scenario, we found out that Harris was going around doing all of the new murders. Because he wanted Jennifer, he was interested in the clock tower case. So, somehow... Maybe when the kid visited Professor Barton's office for therapy, um, Edward, in one way or another, let Harrison on the fact that he was Scissor Man and promised Jennifer to him if he would dress up like Scissor Man and go out and kill people. Um, there is a bit different deal going on in Helen's scenario. But yeah, I believe that either scenario you choose, Edward is still the cursed, one of the cursed twins. And at least in the original game, he was Scissor Man. Um, but in case you haven't played the game and you're interested in watching, for the sake of making it somewhat of a surprise for you I'm going to leave it at that Helen scenario is different you may have probably already figured out after watching me play Jennifer scenario that especially after this shit in the library oh of course so I guess Edward still has to be involved um well, not entirely, but I'm going to leave that as a surprise, you know. We're almost done anyway. We're at the end of scenario two. I am flying through these scenarios once again. We have the final intermission, and then it's back to the Barrows Castle for the last stage as Helen. So, um, I will be back and we will play the last intermission and the last scenario. Hopefully we can knock it out in one video and then we'll be done with Clock Tower Return of Scissorman. 
So uh, you'll have to wait until later, probably. And I will see y'all later. Mwah.